We have here Simon Laminier, the curator of the exhibition Utopics, the 11th Swiss Sculpture Exhibition, and Ned Kosolakov and Fabrice Gigi, two participating artists. And yeah, help me to welcome them and enjoy the talk. Thank you, Aurelia. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, Netko and Fabrice. Uh, I'm especially happy to welcome them twice, actually. Uh, first of all, they are in Art Unlimited, the exhibition itself. And they are also invited to New Topics, the exhibition taking place end of August till October in Biel, Bien, which is like one hour away from here. The Schweizerische Plastik Ausstellung, or the Swiss Sculpture Exhibition, has been taking place since 1954, and we're doing the 11th one. This exhibition is uh, dealing a lot with public space, not public art, but public space, and how do artists come up with ideas, bring their ideas into public domain. When we talk about public space today, it's rather difficult to think really what is a public space because it has evolved, especially since 1954. And we're kind of conscious that public space is overcrowded, overpolluted with information from car signs to advertisement. And I'm totally convinced of two things. That is, on one hand, whatever we see in public space, it's something that speaks for itself, that functions like an ambassador of its own thought. And if you take an advertisement for a yogurt or whatever kind of product, this advertisement stands for what it is, as a car would stand for, for the person who owns it, whatever type of sign we have there. And on the other hand, when we talk about public space, with virtual computers, telephones, this idea of public space has also, I mean, subsequently changed. So how can artists and ideas now appear within this public space, whatever it is? And question, basically, what is the public space? And question also the way ideas are gone through. So I thought it was interesting to invite today and for the show, Fabrice and Netco, because they are especially dealing with such issues as how do we infiltrate space? How do I come with my position, my personal position as an artist within a, a territory, which is not always obvious to define, and probably by, by doing your work, you are also defining your position and the territory and the form of your intervention. So I especially want to ask Netko, because he has a certain practice of infiltration in museums. Maybe you know his like little notes, below paintings. He had a show in Zurich last year, was it? No, Two it years ago? 2005. And you went in the Giacometti room yeah. and started to add little comments, infiltrating the Giacometti room. I mean, it's not nothing. How did that happen? Uh, I have been doing such kind of museum discrete interventions since the uh, early 90s. Actually, my first museum intervention was uh, back in 92 in Sofia in the Museum of Hi History, the national one, which looked very respectable building, the former Justice of Palace, the Palace of Justice. And uh, with the permission of the board of directors, I placed nine ordinary objects among the permanent displays in a very, how to say, very discreet way. It was not announced. So you have a plastic cup of coffee put uh, inside the vitrines of a very precious uh, golden plate from the Thracian period, thousands of years old. Or you have a very common uh, plate from a sidewalk next to Roman mosaics. The same year I came to Switzerland for a residence for six months in, uh, in Bint 39 in Zurich. And I was so much into this that I would like to place such kind of interventions in some museums in Zurich. And uh, I made a project for Landis Museum. This was the year when, uh, if you remember, in 92, they built up this fence to uh, protect this small island behind uh, the Landis Museum from the drug people, the junkies. 
what I proposed to the museum uh, uh, authorities there was uh, in this particular section of the museum, which represents the life of the Swiss uh, uh, people in, uh, I think, in 19th century, uh, with life-size mannequins. Uh, there is a lady who is opening a drawer, or you have like a two people chatting, just like we are now, to place in a discreet way some syringes among them. They say, uh -uh, no way, we can't do that. And I get kind of really attracted, and I try in several other museums. All of them, they refuse such kind of interventions, except for uh, Medicine Historicis Museum. And at the end, I placed 12 transparent little labels with good luck among this horrible stuff about like uh, implements for trepanation of skull somewhere from the Middle Ages. The situation, by the way, changed because a few months ago, I had a show at the Kunstmuseum St. Gallen. And uh, on the upper floor, I had, let's say, my exhibitions called Emotion, my exhibition called Emotions, but they had the display of their permanent collection. And the curators were very happy that I agree. Now they are kind of asking me to do these little comments among the permanent collection. So I did a work called a label label. So only on the label label, which is like a 120, I placed different remarks uh, around the collection. So it's not always easy to put No, comments. it's not easy. It's not easy. And uh, uh, of course, you have to deal with the context and you deal with the supposable, the supposed uh, amount of people and the type of people that they enter this. We did a project with you, which unfortunately wasn't realized, but I can still have treasure this. Uh, Simon is uh, uh, curating uh, uh, neon signs in Geneva. And my proposal to place such a big neon sign on one of the buildings was uh, to have just replica. Instead of having Rolex or Gerard Perigo, you have a replica. It didn't went through. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, as soon as you're confronted to a context, of course, you come in with ideas that are not obviously accepted. I mean, that's also, of course, the role of the artist. It's not only artists who are confronted to this. I think everybody has to behave, more or less, in society. Society has rules and a type of organization. For the show, I thought in Beale that we could bring in, there's about 50 artists involved. We could, we could bring in not only artists, but also groups like nudists, terrorists, people who work on the idea of territory, also micronations. Micronations are self-inventing themselves countries, sometimes for historical reasons like Sealand, or Enenkyo or Okinawa, there's struggles for land, for a piece of territory, and sometimes they're purely fictional, like uh, royal kingdoms of Elgaland, Valgaland, who decided that every territory that is in between, in between reality, virtuality, borders, between languages, all these things, could be annexed and claimed as their own territory. That's why they claimed the the cemetery of Venice as being their territory. And in Beale, they will probably annex something connected with languages, since Beale is a double speaking city. People speak German and French. So they probably will do something. Well, actually, I know they will do something with languages. When we talk about micronations and also people bringing something in public space, there's, I'd say, the infiltration way the discrete way that is kind of not mimetic, but playing on the existent. But then there's also more obvious signs of interventions. The micronations are interesting in this sense because they produce flags, passports, stamps. Some even print money and develop embassies. And that's also why I thought of Fabrice, because a lot of artists do also flags and emblems in a way that speak about themselves and that represent themselves. So how, did you think about that? Yeah, of course you thought about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, but the idea of the flags is, is really uh, difficult for me in my, in the, for me in, in my mind, I, I think the, the, the really bad idea when you make a, an, um, an exhibition with all the flag of the artist, maybe is the real bad, Idea, <laughs> and and after the the, the flag uh, give the the question uh, of the nationality, and and uh, 
and okay, but we, I make a flag in my life, just okay, the question is uh, what is re my real nationality? Uh, and, and, and I think my, my, my body, my skin, is my skin, and okay, uh, I, I have the idea, I make, I make a flag with my tattoo. You know, and, and my nationality stop in my skin. Uh, uh, I, the, the, for me, it's not the, the micronation, it's not a, a revendication of the country or revendication of, of the, the, for uh, any, uh, anything. But, um, but it's just the sign. Um, just a sign, okay, it's my individuality, it's my personality. And I think also that the, the, you be in a, in a public space and, and you put something in a pu public space, you sign that, it's, okay, the, the piece is just yeah, the sign of your uh, 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 personality and uh, identity. And, yeah, I think actually it's important that this idea of the body, body in space, yourself, your identity, that you bring it up. Because it's, I mean, your tattoos are not all visible. So in a way you're revealing, you know, you're pulling off your shirt and putting it as a sign in the public sphere. And I think any, that's what interests me for this exhibition actually, is that all these identities or whatever an artist I'd say would do because that's really a project when did you do these flags the first ones two maybe in uh, 98 you know or uh, yeah that that really it's taking out and doing it as an emblem so for me it's interesting because whatever an artist does usually it speaks for himself. Artists seldom like to speak, so I thank you a lot for you to come <laughs> in. Uh, because they say the work speaks for myself. And that's why I do my work. Now when I make the, this project, I make this project in Corsica. Uh, yeah, I make uh, maybe seven flags with my tattoo uh, and, and I remake the, the... I put the flags in the table with, with the gas lamps like the, the press conference, uh, illegal press conference uh, from Kors, Corsica. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and, and, and the, 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 the invitation is in French, viens dans ma peau, quoi, come in my skin. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but I remake that, but for me it's not, uh, yeah, you make uh, the, the, the the sign, I have my embassy, I have the name for my country, I have the, 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 the title, or I, yeah. But you I also, make a community. Uh, but Nenko, yeah. you also kind of played with this nationality thing once in Venice. There was something with a Bulgarian pavilion, maybe you could talk about that? Exactly 10 years ago, uh, Bulgaria left Venice Biennale somewhere in the 60s because there was a kind of disagreement between the official, official land, official art, and this bloody capitalistic uh, abstract expressionism, for example. And uh, so this was virtually the only country missing from the entire Eastern Bloc, from Europe, missing at Venice. And uh, after a really huge struggle with uh, Bulgarian authorities and afterwards the Biennale, because we got invited finally, uh, so I took part representing Bulgaria in 1999 with a project called Announcement, which consisted of uh, 15,000 postcards with the Bulgarian colors, which are exactly like the Italian ones, white, green, and red. And on these postcards, which they were distributed in uh, seven plexiglass boxes, placed uh, uh, one was in the French pavilion, one was in uh, the Austrian pavilion, uh, and uh, two at the end was of Arsenale, and two at the end was of, uh, of uh, Italian Pavilion, and so on. So it was written in uh, Bulgarian, Italian, and English, uh, the following text, roughly saying, was this. After nearly 30 years of absence from the participating countries of the Venice Biennale, the Republic of Bulgaria is proud to announce 
that it is ready to participate in the next Venice Biennale in year 2001. So uh, with this project, you're actually participating without using any money, just 15,000 postcards, and saying that you are ready to participate in the next Biennale. And it was fine the reaction of the people because uh, there were so many of them who said, ah, it's very interesting, where is the show? And they say, no, there is no show, this is it. And they say, ah, you're going to take part after two years. They say, no, this is not the point. And uh, later on, I realized that such kind of intervention project which was official participation, could come only from a loser type of country like Bulgaria. Because you can't imagine, for example, uh, the, the German pavilion on the British one, just to have this small label and say, sorry, we, because of some reason, we take part after two years. It's too expensive, you can't afford this for a big uh, nation and country. So you kind of played on the representation, the idea, the virtually potential pavilion creating an existing work. I mean, uh, you are playing just because the circumstances were like this. Bulgaria, they announce a competition for curatorial concepts two months before the opening of the Biennale. And I was seeing the things where they're going, and I got this idea in early March, and I said, this is it. I mean, you don't need money, you don't need space for that. The question is just to convince the the people in Bulgaria and also the Biennale, the late Zeman, that this is really worth to, to, to happen. And uh, yeah, it worked. Yeah, but I, that, for me, that's exactly what's happening a lot now. It was maybe symptomatic that it happened then. But there's a lot of things that can be developed just through announcement, declaring somehow a territory, a place that is in the future. But just by announcing it, you are making it exist. The only problem is that there are so many announcements, so you really have to make it in a very clever way. Everybody is announcing something. Yeah. It's better to maybe to sit silent, to stay silent. Maybe this is also a kind of a statement nowadays. Yeah, I think <laughs> understatement in public space, because Jardini yeah. is almost a public space, yeah. Yeah. Uh, is interesting because, I mean, that's that's what I mean with ideas. It's like understating, coming in, infiltrating with ideas. And especially about, I mean, you've been doing flat earths, a lot of works like that. I mean, basically breaking ordinary values. I mean, you too. I mean, definitely. A that's year what, ago, that's what we pay a artists year, for. A year ago, uh, there was an exhibition called Shifting Identities in, in Kunsthaus Zurich, curated by Miriam Varadinis. And my project was called Past Control Stories and involved all the counters at the Zurich airport from the people coming into Zurich and going out. So we got permission from the police people there, and they say, yeah, yeah, we can do that, no, no problem. And in the middle of the night, with a guard, we went through all the counters, and I made these little comments, which they could be read only from the people facing the, the police person on the other side. The comments, they were kind of tongue-in-cheek ones. For example, entering Zurich, it was written, are you really sure you want to enter here? It's too expensive, I mean. <laughs> or you have... Uh, uh, what a nice photo you have here. Or what shall we do now? You know that in Bulgaria, if you have a police and the other person is guilty, you say, okay, what shall we do now with you? Or you have a little drawing with a little creature with three heads and say a man with three heads and three passports. And the next day I was here in, in, at the, in Basel and then the curator was going to say, yeah, they just took it away because they said the people were complaining. And uh, there was no really complaints, but they got kidnapped, really scared. Lucky that I documented the work. How did you react? Huh? How did you react? I mean, I documented the work, and in a way, okay, cynically speaking, it was better for me because the folder with all the messages was presented in the exhibition in Zurich, which basically none of the audience could see all of them if you're just passing only one of And it says, okay, what a nice photo you have on your passport. I mean, basically, when you are in in public space or confronted with police or territory, essentially we're confronted with rules and also power, of course. The fact that there is a control over this territory. That's why claims over territories like micronations or like what artists do in public space is, is interesting now as phenomenon because even with web projects or different type of interventions, we can question who owns the land or who has power over this territory. And especially what interests me is also who has power over thought, because thought is always something you can a priori have as freely 
as possible. But Fabrice, you're dealing a lot with these notions of power and controlling surveillance. Yeah, yeah I, I remember the <laughs> from the jury Cloton, and um, I don't know the, 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 the date, but uh, uh, the, the Migro Museum make an invitation and, uh, and think about me, about the, the problem of the security of, uh, in the airport and, uh, and blah, blah, blah. Okay, you'll be the great artist for make that. And, uh, and, and okay, I, I just thinking about Zurich Lothan, I, I, what it's possible I make. And I, I go in Zurich Lothan and I ask, well, where is the, 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 the track for, for uh, Rolling and narrowing the, the red carpet, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and in Zurich Lothan you have not red carpet. Uh -huh. and okay, I make I, I give. Okay, I make I make one, and I, I make a piece with a bigger uh, uh, wheel with the red carpet, and and uh, and the Migro Museum asked me, uh, yes, what, what, why, where is the problem with the security? Yeah. And I, I told, it's normal, you, you, you put the red carpet, you have a lot of security men come in. <laughs> but, but it's not uh, really with the custom, and, uh, yeah, it's just the... But you are all, you're also very interested just in formally mm. with the elements as a sculptor to take these elements so we're confronted because the role was rather big. I mean, it, that must have been a very, well, from very long a red symbol. carpet. You have a red carpet. You have an important personality come in, and you have a lot of bodyguard and security, you know, and, and for the protection. You know. But you make it also as an object. Yes. I mean, it's something we only see usually in its function, that it's like flat, going to the airplane. You rolled it up. It yeah. was not yeah. ready for use. Ready for you, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, working in, in this air, airport, just to, to get to the piece of Ernut Meek, I just want to give a sign about this work here, not related exactly to our talk, but I think it's very interesting that he shot in this kind of situation where you have people having to empty their pockets. You know, you take out your little bottles of water and, and uh, knives and scissors, and then what, do the, what happens with these things once they're taken away? And so after they're controlled and they have to unpack, you know, all the bags, and then even the guards who unpacked and emptied the bags and controlled them are even checked at the exit. So I think it's this kind of constant, ongoing controlling society also on one hand, and on the other hand, we are more and more mobile. We're constantly moving from one place to another. And we are, we're not even sure actually where we are anymore. So I think it's interesting, this relationship, like how do you, how do you like symbolize, let's say, you know, these elements of power, of control? Mm -hmm. I mean, Netko, you're more. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about the airports and uh, I have a fear of flying. And since the last year, we tried with my wife, Slava, to, to drive to Western Europe. Whenever we can do, we, we drive. So the day after tomorrow, maybe I'll call you and I'll tell you, did I succeed tomorrow when I'm crossing the Swiss border? And if somebody says, aha, uh -huh, come, on 120 speed limit, you did 160, did I? convince this person that it was artistic action. I'll call you the day after tomorrow. Hopefully they'll, they will not say, okay, you have to stay here. I mean, but we have spoken a lot about simulation. There are <laughs> limits to, you know, the simulac is something difficult. You cannot go into a bank with a plastic gun and say, give me your money. And after you say, no, it was just a joke. Just I was like joke. testing. Even I have a, two lawyers behind me and we filmed the whole scene to see how things were going on. You cannot, there are limits to simulac. Yeah, there are limits, Especially but then, with you, law. You really, then you really ask yourself questions. Okay, if you pretend to be kind of anarchistic artists in a way, how, how far we go with this anarchism? In 2001, there was an exhibition called Zonsbeck 9 in Arnhem in Holland. 
and uh, in front of the police station, the big headquarters, they had this very, very kind of a casual sculpture, typical for the 60s and the 70s, kind of abstract, but semi-abstract. You have a family. So you have the, the, the man and the woman, and like a two children. So you have like a cylinders and, and bows as a heads. So there was one little guy like that. And we took permission from uh, the widow of the sculpture, from the owner, the police station, from any kind of architectural council of the city to do what we wanted to do. Then a young uh, sculpture called Ivan from Mannheim, he made the exact replica of that piece. And in the morning of the opening of the show, 9 o'clock in the morning, he replaced the original with the replica. And afterwards, with a big hammer, he destroyed. And the police people, they are watching and laughing because there was a permission for that one. OK, so I am anarchist, but I got permission for everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's also for sale. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I think what we're trying to develop, to go back to the exhibition itself, because you will see the two works are really, I mean, you are working on a specific, a specific uh, intervention. He's going to, Netko is going to work on the political system in Switzerland and something very typical about initiatives and referendums taking place in a democracy. And I think it's also interesting that we have other groups like naturists and, and also uh, countries developing other currencies. And they are going to come in with their proposals in the city and confront, I mean, other thoughts it's not it's not going to be simulacra it was no, just be what, I, what i would like position to, what i would like to do uh, like uh, really using the cliche of somebody who is not living in switzerland is uh, we would like to make an initiative with uh, a table and uh, like a person with uh, collecting uh, signatures with an umbrella on the top but don't we say what it is okay i'm not saying this <laughs> why not nobody's coming to bill i'm oh, sorry but <laughs> <laughs> why not to say the idea Shall we? No. No, I think it's good that we have surprises. Okay. I like it. It's very funny. <laughs> I mean, it's going to think we're going to have to work it also, you know, on the legal conceptual level so it functions. That's also what issues I think are interested in the, with micronations and artist positions, as you said, is how can you legally also function in a system which has rules and when you pervert these rules, and you're pretty convinced also by that, you, you still have to be able to exactly do the right shift that, that is meaningful for the work and also functions in the rule regulation system. Yeah. But anyhow, I, we don't have too long to talk about this conversation. I don't know if you have anybody has any questions. We've been kind of surfing through different concepts. And if not, I just welcome you to Beale in 30th of August of this year in the public sphere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>